Starship design is how I make my living. In the process of making a spaceship battleship, I once asked myself what a three-dimensional space version of a World War II battleship would look like. One that uses big turrets in efficient firing arcs and with angled armor plating. And then I came to realize that this design kind of already exists. This would be Star Destroyers from Star Wars. I'm aware that there are several different Star Destroyer classes within the Star Wars canon, just as there are many different classes of battleships built in the 20th century. If we wanted, we could even talk about an equivalent Star Wars warship for almost any World War II warship class. Whether that Star Wars ship shows up in games, books, comics, fan art, or the big screen. Let's talk about the design similarities between Star Destroyers and World War II battleships, such as the North Carolina, Iowa, Bismarck, HMS Hood, Yamato class, and the most prominent Star Destroyers, the Imperial and Imperial II class, one of the most advanced battleships used in the Galactic Civil War. In fact, we'll use this model I made of the Chimera, Grand Admiral Thrawn's flagship, and maybe someday I will use this model to actually finish another certain project. I happen to play World of Warships, and although I wouldn't dare use that game as an exact historical guide, I do find the mechanics of the game really provide some understanding about why warships are designed the way they are. First we have to get something out of the way. Most of you Star Wars nerds already know that an Imperial Star Destroyer carries 72 TIE craft, quite an impressive fighter and strike force. This poses the question, is an Imperial Star Destroyer more a battleship or more a carrier? Or is it a combination of the two? A battle carrier, something like the Japanese Issei class which carried torpedo bombers. Well, there are some Star Destroyers, like the Tector class, that carry no TIE fighter strike craft at all, and instead focuses on protective armor and firepower. Just as there are probably several variants that carry more fighters than the typical Imperial Star Destroyer. Just on account of the ISD's design, with the layers of armor at sloping angles, these ships are built for direct combat. A carrier in space, real life, or in any universe, is more of a long-range attack ship relying on its strike craft or fighters for almost all of its offensive and defensive abilities. Carriers have nowhere near the armor or protection required to directly engage with gunships. If possible, it will never directly engage in battle at all. Battleships, however, are meant to absolutely take damage in direct combat with other gunships. However, even many World War II battleships and gun cruisers carried a small number of fighters on launch catapults. By the 1930s, everyone realized how vulnerable surface warships were to air attack, and an increasing number of anti-aircraft measures were taken, like the aforementioned fighters on catapults. In Star Wars, the Empire's warships have a similar vulnerability to fighters, which can swarm and overwhelm even a mighty Star Destroyer, which benefits greatly from the protection of its TIE LNs and TIE interceptors. The Empire simply decided to go ahead and supplement these TIE fighters with TIE bombers, which allows a Star Destroyer to project its strike range much further than its turbolaser turrets. This segues into the signature element that makes a battleship a battleship, the guns. A World War II battleship is built around its primary guns, in the case of something like the North Carolina and the Iowa class, it's a 16-inch cannons arranged in three triple turrets. Similarly, a Star Destroyer's primary armament are very high-caliber turbo lasers and eight turrets. The eight turrets are often shown with quadruple barrels, sometimes with triple barrels, and sometimes double barrels. You are free to discuss in the comments section which class a Star Destroyer uses which type of turret. I'm sure some pedantic arguments will ensue. But these turbolasers are used to attack other capital ships and to bombard surface targets on planets. They are almost useless against smaller, fast ships at short range due to their slow tracking and incapable of really attacking fighters. I should note that the Yamato class, with its 18-inch guns, had a type of shotgun shell that was meant to fire a burst against attacking fighters but it's not evident if this was effective at all. The Star Destroyer's other primary armament are its ion cannons. These fire a disabling burst of plasma meant to disable the systems of other ships and take down shields. World War II battleships do not have an exact equivalent for ion cannons. What they do have is the option to switch from armor piercing to high explosive shells 
Explosive shells are the closest equivalent to ion cannon fire, since these shells are most likely to cause fires and disable any number of systems on an enemy ship's superstructure. They also do not over-penetrate and go through the ship's hull before exploding, but almost always explode on impact. For Star Destroyers, we can say that the heavy turbo lasers are the armor-piercing element, and ion cannons are the fire-starting or disabling element. The turret placement on Star Destroyers, due to its angular sloped design, is automatically what we call super-firing. Super-firing means that the turrets are placed in a way where one turret does not interfere with the other's firing ability. And yes, the placement of these giant turbolaser turrets does not offer full coverage. For some reason, all of these huge turrets are on the dorsal side of the Star Destroyer's hull, not the ventral side at all. Why this is, well, we don't know. Maybe this is not a problem though when attacking large ships, since the angle of the bow can be lowered slightly to assure that all of these turbolasers can be fired at a target at once. The secondary armament of World War II battleships consists of a number of smaller 5 to 8 inch guns. These are designed to attack ships at close range, especially smaller ones such as destroyers. In Star Wars, ISDs have secondary turbolasers, smaller ones meant for the same purpose. And of course, on real battleships, there are anti-aircraft weapons, an essential element in World War II as the threat of aircraft attack became increasingly more severe. The Yamato was successfully sunk by over 300 US planes, and it was armed with about 200 varying types of AA guns. This still wasn't enough. Perhaps some fighter protection would have greatly helped the Yamato, very much like Star Destroyers have in their TIE fighters. Star Destroyers have some 60 smaller turbolaser batteries used for fighter, torpedo, and missile defense. Many of you fans claim that the ISDs really have no anti-fighter laser ability to speak of, and this role was left to other types of escort ships such as the Lancer-class frigate or the Tartan patrol cruiser. This may be true to an extent, but it seems to be a leap that no anti-fighter protection of its own is built into this design. We have to talk about torpedoes. Okay, in World War II, a torpedo is one of the most feared weapons for large surface ships. They were powerful, they could not be shot down, only dodged, and they would force a ship into maneuvers that may not be to its advantage. Some World War II battleships, such as the HMS Hood, were armed with torpedoes. In a lot of Star Wars novels and comics, Star Destroyers are also armed with at least some complement of proton torpedoes. These are the same weapons used by Y-Wings and X-Wings to attack ratio the targets, like the first Death Star's exhaust port. There are different classifications and sizes of proton torpedoes, but they pack a devastating punch in Star Wars as well, which is another reason Star Destroyers are so vulnerable to fighter attack, especially from Y-Wings and B-Wings. Proton torpedoes can also lock onto and home in on a target. However, unlike in World War II, Proton torpedoes can actually be shot down by lasers or even smaller concussion missiles. Just a few proton torpedoes launched at long range can easily be dealt with by a Star Destroyer's turbo lasers. This becomes more of a problem when dozens of proton torpedoes are launched at short range. Yet another reason why Y-Wings are the top threat and first on the kill list. Y-Wings and B-Wings are equivalent to World War II torpedo bombers. Now let's talk about protection. Notice how the profile of a World War II battleship matches a Star Destroyer. There is an angled hull with a kind of superstructure on the top. The nature of a real battleship superstructure serves a practical purpose. This is where all of the battleship's sensing devices live, such as spotlights, rangefinders, and radar. The bridge is also here, mostly so that there is a commanding view of the situation. In modern warships, most command occurs from the Combat Information Center, not the exposed bridge. I believe the Star Destroyer is arranged this way purely due to mimicry of World War II battleships, not for any practical purpose that I can think of. I can see a reason why sensors may need to be exposed outside of the hull, but not really the bridge, or in this case the primary shield generators, which are these two spheres here. It still makes for an impressive aesthetic though. However, the hull and armor of a Star Destroyer is amazingly practical. Perhaps the Star Destroyer's primary defense is not really shields, but armor. Angled armor is always preferred, 
This effectively increases the distance weapons must travel to achieve penetration, and in some cases can even result in a ricochet. I'm not sure if a ricochet would work for a Star Wars laser, but ricochets certainly occurred on World War II battleships. If there is sufficient armor in the bow or stern of the ship, and if the shell arrives at a severely indirect angle, it would ricochet off the hull. World War II battleships also have an armor belt all around the side of the ship, which protected the ship's most vital areas such as the engine rooms or magazine storage. The Star Destroyer has plates of varying thickness all over its hull. Most likely, just like in World War II, the more armor you put on here, the less maneuverable this ship will be. Star Destroyers are certainly not nimble ships. Just like on World War II battleships, sacrifices in armor may have to be made in certain areas. The armor protection of these ships varies depending on what the Imperials consider the more vulnerable parts of the ship. Even though Star Destroyers may not be as practically designed or as well thought out as actual World War II battleships, they are still very cool ships, and I'm thankful for their iconic appearance in the continuing Star Wars story. Well, space friends, that wraps it up for this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and let me know if you think I'm wrong or if you think I'm right about this. Until next time, space friends. In Star Wars, the Empire's warships have a similar retake, since high explosive shells are all retake. For Star Destroyers, we can say that heavy turbolasers are the armor-piercing retake. For Star Destroyers, we could probably say that Heavy turbolator retake. I hear a dog. Jet up dog.